The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We had been discussing chapter 4, Gnana Karma Sanyasa Yoga, Yoga of Renunciation of Action in Knowledge. So far, we have seen in Bhagavad Gita that the self is imperishable, this body is perishable. However, I am right now attached to this body. I consider this to be me in spite of my intellectual appreciation of the fact taught in Bhagavad Gita in chapter 2 that this self is imperishable and you are that self, but my attachment to this body, mind and intellect is so strong that I do not recognize that fact. So to change this paradigm for me and to grasp that idea that I the self is not perishable, Bhagavan said, you should start with Karma Yoga. Right now your goal is to purify your mind and intellect, which is the instrument of cognition, instrument of knowledge, that is right now is veiled by this ignorance. So to get out of this ignorance, you have to purify your internal instrument, and for that the path is Karma Yoga. Obviously, the very fact that karma is involved in it, I need to know the karma. So Bhagavan said that, therefore, I will also tell you what is action and what is inaction. So in verse 16, Bhagavan said, Kim karma, kim akarma, iti kavayo api atra mohitaha. What is action and what is inaction? Even the wise people are confused. So we have seen Bhagavan has declared before that I come on this earth many times. Just as you have come, I have taken birth as many times as you. You and I have taken many births, but I never get attached to it because I remain in the awareness that my nature is ajaha and avyaya. The self in me remains unborn and immutable, indivisible. But it seems right now that the self is divided among all beings. For me as an individual, that perception is very strong that myself is within me and yourself is within you. And Bhagavan said that to avoid that attachment to this body, that I consider this to be me, and therefore the consciousness which I experience, I consider it to be limited to me alone and confined to this body. If this body is not there, there will not be any consciousness. So we want it to, to get out of that misconception about the, your, the nature of yourself, the consciousness, work on Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga, no expectations for the fruits no attachment to your actions or anything else and have your mind balanced. These are the three requirements. And then then go and perform your actions because you cannot avoid performing action. As an individual, as a limited ego, as the conditioned consciousness that I am, I am a conscious being, my body I am conscious of, in the same way that I am conscious of all the objects in this world. But I consider my body to be something unique. That's because it is associated with my consciousness. With my consciousness, I can order my body to do things which I can order other things in this world to do. 
So, I consider this body to be so unique that I identify with it. I identify with it and I'm attached to it. So, I need to function as an individual using this body, mind and intellect. That's activity. When this body is functioning, I see the activity. When the body is not functioning, I call it the body is inactive. So, the activity and inactivity currently I'm defining as per my observation of the my body and the body is outside. So it said, Kim karma, Kim akarma, iti kavayo api atra mohitaha. What is action and what is inaction? Even wise people are confused about it. Therefore, tatte karma pravakshami. Therefore, I am going to tell you what action is. Yajgnatva mokshashe asubhat. Once you know what is action, you will be liberated from all evils, all evils of getting bound by these actions. So normally we can think of what is so complex about action. Something is active, I can feel the activity. Something is not moving, it's inactive. My car is in perfect equilibrium. It is parked in a driveway. It's inactive. The car is moving, it is active. It's, I can see that from my senses. I can detect activity and also can detect inactivity. But Bhagavan said it's not that simple. Your reliance on your senses is not a wise thing to do because senses are unreliable. Senses can give you a, a perception or information which may not be correct. And we have seen many examples when you're sitting in a train. And most of us who come from India have experienced that. You're sitting in a train, waiting for the train to start. But suddenly you see the platform starts moving. The people standing on the platform starts moving. Even for a fraction of a second, you think, why these people are moving? And suddenly your intellect takes over and says, no, no, no. Neil, it's not the platform and the people. But your train is moving. Because I had a previous experience of that fact. And therefore, I can come to the final conclusion that platform is not moving. People on the platform are not moving. But my train is moving and therefore, I am moving along with it. But without that previous experience, my senses simply tell, I am stationary and the platform is moving. When you first time see a mirage... We were in a national park in Africa one time and say, oh, there is a lake there. Well, let's go to the lake and see. There are, there are birds in the lake and the animals in the lake. And, well, let's go and see the lake. You keep driving, the lake never comes. You realize it was a mirage. So your senses can give you a false impression about activity. So therefore, Bhagavan said, action is so complicated that even wise people get confused. Even the very intelligent person also can be confused by this kind of illusion. Tatte karma pravakshami. In this case, because you are going to be engaged in karma yoga, I advised you to get engaged in karma yoga. Karma yoga can only be performed if you are performing karma. And therefore, it is very important for you to know what karma is. And I am going to explain to you that karma. Then Bhagwan said, Karmano hi api bodhavyam, bodhavyam cha vi karmana. Akarmanas cha bodhavyam, gahana karmano gati hi. He said, You should know karma. It is necessary that you know what karma is because you are getting engaged in karma yoga. Bodhavyam cha vi karmana. Also, you should know what is forbidden action we karma vikrut karma distorted actions you should also know what actions are distorted actions they will devolve you from where you are so they are forbidden actions the forbidden actions are universal thou shall not steal thou shall not kill those are we karmas because they are not in your benefit however even that's not as simple bhagwan said because for an army man, killing is not sin. Average person, killing is sin. So therefore, you should know what is vikarma is. Akarmanascha bodhavya. Also, you should know what is inactivity. Gahana karmano gatihi. Do not take this subject very lightly. Because the nature of action is very perplexing. 
it is very difficult to understand. Something which looks as activity may not be activity. Something which is seemingly inactive may not be inactive. And therefore, you should know all three of them. So, what is karma? So, Swamiji explains, I as a living being, I go through the stages of activity and inactivity. So, in my day-to-day life, while I'm in a waking state, I'm basically active. Well, even then, there are, there are times where I'm inactive. There are pauses of inactivity. But most of the time in my waking state, my body is active. When I'm dreaming, my body is inactive, but mind is active. The mind is actively projecting a new world for me. So mind is very active, but body is inactive. But in a deep sleep, neither the body is active, nor the mind is active. Now we are obviously talking about voluntary functions. The body is not voluntarily acting in my deep sleep. So in deep sleep, I'm in activity. Deep sleep, there is no progress can be made. No new knowledge can be gained. No new achievement can be made. Therefore, this inactivity is not prescribed for a long period of time. So Bhagavan said, you should know what action is. Life is suffering between activity and inactivity. You know what is activity. You also know what is inactivity. He said, then come to the activity. There are actions which are to be performed and actions which are to be avoided at any cost. They are weak karmas. And actions which are to be performed are described in a sastra as are three types of actions. Nitya karma, naimitik karma and kamya karma. Nitya karmas are daily duties and they are benign in nature. In other words, if I do something which is expected of me, nobody is going to congratulate me. Getting ready in the morning, brushing my teeth, going to the office. Nobody comes and congratulates me every day that Neil, you are doing a great job. Because they are expected of me. They are my nitya karmas. Then there are naimitik karmas, the karmas which I perform on a special occasions. Now there, there will be a differentiation where some people will perform those actions and some people will not perform those actions. Something asked from you when your country is in trouble or we are in a pandemic. That's a naimitic karma. There you will have a, a differentiation between some people will follow those actions and some people will not. So therefore they are either binding or liberating. Actions which I perform selflessly are liberating actions and actions which I perform selflessly are binding actions. So those selfish actions are kamya karma. Desire prompted actions which I perform just to fulfill my desire. Bhagavan said, so action you should know. You should know what is inaction. Inaction when there is no activity taking place. Even though I'm conscious about it, there is no activity taking place. And the karma, you should avoid them at any cost because they are dangerous actions. They are detrimental to your growth. They are detrimental to the others around you. They are vikarma, vikrut karma. And then the next verse says, Karmani akarma yaha pasyet. Akarmani cha karma yaha. Sa buddhiman manusyeshu. Sa yuktaha krishna karma krut. And I'll tell you, I have seen many commentaries on this verse. People have written pages after pages after pages. And even after reading all those commentaries, you feel that there is something still not there. Because Bhagavan is putting a great emphasis on this verse, saying, Sa buddhiman manasyesho. Among all the men, that person is the wise person who can see karmani a karmayaha. One who sees the inactivity in activity. It seemingly activity for my sense perception, but it is not activity. Another one, akarmani cha karmayaha. And who sees the inactivity in activity? Karmani cha akarma. One who sees the action in inaction and inaction in action. It's contradictory. And as we have seen, all great ideas that are communicated, 
by this type of conundrums, you know, and contradictory statements. It's far away from me, but very close to me. It's very active, but it is inactive. So we have seen in our Sankhya Darshan the two entities, Purusha and Prakriti. Or Vedanta Darshan says Purusha and Prakriti are one and the same. Purusha is pure Brahman. Prakriti is projection of Brahman with Maya. But in all cases, Brahman or the Purusha is conscious but inactive. Prakriti is animated and active, but it is jad, is unconscious. So one is inert but active, other one is conscious but inactive. So this superimposition of one on the other is our main confusion. Anytime I see myself active, I consider I am active. So this sense about myself is, I am doing this. I am sitting, I am speaking, I am talking, I am hearing, I am walking. Whatever it is, I consider it to be my activity. But from the perspective of consciousness, it is the activity of my body. My body is walking, my body is sitting. So this activity of the body is superimposed on myself is my activity. So I have this clear understanding right now that I am talking. The Bhagavan said that when you think about it, that which enables you to talk is silent all throughout. There is an observer which says I am talking. There is an observer which sees that I am thinking. When I am thinking, my mind is active. And then there is a part of me which sees that I am thinking. My mind has a thought which cannot be seen by any senses, but there is a part in me which sees that thought. That sees that thought rising and that thought also dying or vanishing. So Bhagavan said, this activity and inactivity superimposed on each other of Purusha and Prakriti. This body, mind and intellect are part of the Prakriti. All activities are taking place by this body, mind, and intellect, but I constantly think I am the doer. This superimposition of my body's activity on myself, my mind's activity on myself, is creating confusion, which is I am the doer. One who sees that I in me is not doing anything, is simply enabling me to act. That I, the consciousness, is just enabler. Just as electricity is nothing but an energy which powers every electrical gadget in my house. But electricity itself is never manifested. It never, I can never see electricity. I can never bottle it up. So Bhagavan says, karmani akarma yah pasir. One who sees inaction, inaction. So I see in my activity, myself is inactive. And then akarmani cha karma yah. And there is an activity in action. So when I see from the perspective of consciousness that the participation of my consciousness in all the activities, there is no activity can take place in my life without me being conscious about it. I do not take any credit for what happens in my deep sleep because the consciousness was not associated any active agency. The body was not active, mind was not active. There was no sense of I am the doer take place in my deep sleep. Even though I know that there is no activity taking place in deep sleep, I was very much there. So when I see this superimposition of activity on inactive self and activity of the self on inactive body, when I start differentiating these two, who is acting, who is not? Bhagavan said, Sab buddhiman manusyesha. Out of all the beings, all beings are confused right from their birth. That everybody is deluded right from their birth that this is me and I am the doer. Sa yuktaha. Sa krishna karmakrut. One who has this clear perception in his mind 
that my body, mind, intellect are acting, but I remain inactive. Whereas my body, mind, intellect are inactive because they are inert. They have no capability of their own to act in this world, but my consciousness is making them act and therefore the actual doer is the, my consciousness. Without consciousness, no activity takes place and therefore I am active in this world. Such a person is Sahayukta, such a person is a yogi. Who can become a witness of his own activity as a third party? I can be a third party witness for everything in the world, but I should be third party witness in my own self also. Yasya sarve samarambaha karma sankalpa varjitaha gnanagni dagda karmanam tam ahuhu panditam budaha This verse is a difficult verse to tackle. So we will take, we will see it quickly, but we will we'll look at it again. It's a, Yasya sarve samarambha, whose all actions are without any any plan. So, and kama sankalpa, so kama and sankalpa, all activities, all samarambha, all activities are devoid of desire and planning. It's a sankalpa actually is determination, what I want to get out of this action. Gnanagni dagda karmanam tam ahuhu panditam budaha whose all actions are devoid of desire and any planning, planning in a sense that any expectation of a particular result, he says such a person, all his actions, for such a person, all actions are burned by the fire of knowledge. This fire of knowledge that I am not the doer, it burns all the actions, so no actions are binding for him. Tam ahuhu panditam budaha. The wise people call that person a sage. So your actions should become benign. They will not be binding to you, but they should be liberating to you. We'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com dot com or at chinmaya richmond dot org thank you om sarve bhavantu sukina sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kaschit dukha bhag bave Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om